Hello, welcome to De Montfort Thank University. Thank you. Do you want to start by telling us a little bit about Sport and the British? Sport and the British is a 30 part series that's been going out on Radio 4 and it's into week two at the moment. And it came about because Lucy Lunt, who's one of the producers, and I do a programme together called Rambix. We were driving across Yorkshire listening to the making of music, which was one of the big epic series that they did. And I had also been listening to the history of the world in a hundred objects. And I said to Lucy, we should really do this for sport. And she said, well, that's fine. I know she'd worked on the making of music. She said, but I don't know anything about sports. And I said, well, that's okay, I do. And we can get a team of academics to help us. So that's why we came to the, the gang here at De Montfort. And, and they've been hugely helpful. What sort of help have they given you? A lot of the research is done by Richard Holt or Tony Collins and Tony Mason as well and, and the team here. And they provide me with a background, uh, background notes to each programme and a sort of framework of a script which then I rewrite to make it to make it sort of easy on the ear because what we listen to and the amount of information we can take in through our ears is much much smaller than what we can comprehend on the page so even complicated sentence structures that might look fine on paper don't sound fine on the radio so it's sort of simplifying things making it accessible and given that it's for an audience who are not a sporty audience, I and mean, there's hardly any sport on Radio 4, you, you've got to make it um, engaging and, and really grab them and, and make them want to listen. So that's sort of my, my job. Did you learn anything? Oh, I learned. Surprising? Every single programme I learned something new, I learned something surprising. I didn't know that football nearly split in the way Rugby League and Rugby Union did, and that could have happened sort of 20 years before it happened in rugby. I didn't know the whole background stuff about rugby school and, and that Pierre de Coubertin had gone there and the influence of Thomas Arnold and the muscular Christianity idea. I didn't know uh, who the headmistresses were who had first introduced sport for women and when that had happened and how even then how limiting it was that, that you know until clothing changed and even after clothing changed there was a real re resistance towards women being able to do sport. What are our academics like as interviews? They were lovely, they were lovely and, and it's interesting because um, Dick Holt is, is very um, sort of almost, he's so positive and sweet and, and wants to see the good in, in all of sport and, and Tony Collins is almost like his, you know, you've got these two sides of the, of the, of the square there and Tony's like no, 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 these are all the things that are wrong and so it's lovely because you get actually quite a nice balance. And, and Mike Cronin's expertise from, from both his knowledge of sport in this country and specifically sport in Ireland has been, has been really good as well. And it's just, it's just lovely to be able to talk in depth and to talk intellectually about sport and to really treat it like a proper subject, which it, it, in my view it is. Uh, and I am always interested at in seeing history through the prism of sport or geography or, or e even the, the sciences, you know, and I, I, I hope that maybe this might help sport to be um, taught in schools at a much younger level than, than you would hear, but uh, for younger kids and using sport as a way in. And I know lots of teachers are podcasting this series and using it in schools because their kids will go, oh great, we're going to learn about the Olympics. You know, they're really energised and, and they connect with the Olympics. And then learning other stuff through that, that's, that, that the Olympics is their, the key, hopefully we help them through the door and away they go and actually they understand more and enjoy more about sport. Sort of feedback have you had from this? Um, early days, I know. Yeah, early, very good actually. We've had some very nice reviews, and I, and I always get, I'm particularly pleased if I get a tweet or an email or a review from someone who doesn't like sport <laughs> but says, Oh, I don't like sport, I didn't expect to enjoy this, but now I'm gripped. And that's been really heartwarming actually, because I think that was the point of the series, and that's, you know, the, the challenge of selling it to Radio 4 and, and getting them to, to say yes we'll have it, it, it was then to prove that their listeners, that Radio 4 listeners would have, there would be enough depth in this subject to, to be able to run for 30 programmes and I think we've proved that there is, I hope so anyway I think you have, thank you very much Kira. you're welcome, thank you okay. very much. thanks